Before I purchased my first model train set, I wanted to know exactly how much space was I going to need to set up a layout. So I found SCARM. The free version lets you create a track that's up to 100 pieces. Uh, I was buying about 25 pieces, so this is going to be plenty for me. Uh, I also wanted to keep track of all the pieces that I had so that if I ever wanted to do a big layout, I would know all of uh, the pieces in my inventory. Uh, if you go to the help menu and look at about, you can see this is the unlicensed version of SCARM. If you click on the buy a license, it'll take you out to the website and you can see that the license is $40. The main SCARM page, which is just SCARM.info, has a link right in the middle where you can download the free version. The first, this is the version that I'm actually using right now. Now one really nice thing about the free version it will let you open tracks that someone else does that are far bigger than the 100 piece limit. So this is uh, one of my inventory files. Whenever I get a new track, I put it into this file and uh, I can open it. I can manipulate this if I want to. I just can't add to it. So if I were to try to add a piece of track to this, it would give me an error saying I've hit the limit of 100 pieces. So exactly how big a layout can you do with uh, 100 pieces? I'm going to uh, go up to the toolbox and I'm going to create uh, basically, uh, it's called a baseboard. It's, it's uh, the edge definition of what I'm going to do. My first layout was on a four by eight sheet of plywood. So I'm gonna put in 96 inches by 48 inches. That is the size of a four by eight piece of plywood. Now I can use the wheel on my mouse to scroll in and out. Uh, if at any time you want to zoom to fit, you can hit the slash key. That's the one with the question mark on your keyboard and it'll take everything that you've drawn and it'll fit it on the screen. To add a piece of track, you just click on the track and uh, it will add it wherever the red triangle is. If you wanna add the same piece of track over and over, which is something you do quite often. You're doing a long straightaway or a big curve. The space bar will let you add the same piece over and over. If you want to select a piece, you click it. If you want to move it, you can right click, move, or you can hold down the control key while you click and you can move it. It's going to connect wherever you see the red and the green triangles. You can also draw a box around pieces and then you can move those pieces however you'd like. So once you learn just the basic control click lets you move, uh, selecting or drawing a box around uh, a, a piece lets you select part or all of it. If you double click, it'll let you select all the continuously connected pieces of track. So if I wanted to move this whole thing up here, I hold down a control, move it up here, just that simple. So let's make a, a layout that fits on my uh, four by eight sheet of plywood. I'm gonna start up here. So I'm gonna right click and say, give me a new starting point right about there. And you can put the starting point wherever you like. And I'm going to add, by hitting the space bar, some straight pieces. These are the most basic uh, 248 millimeter pieces in Kato's track. And my first set had 315 curves. So let's add some 315 curves. Curves can either go to the left or to the right. I'm gonna make these go to the right. There's one, space, space, space. Now looking at what I have, this is half of an oval layout. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click and then I'm going to copy this and I'm gonna paste it. Now it doesn't look like I did much, but I actually created right over top of the original a copy. So if I right click and move, it'll move the one that's on top. And if I connect the end to the beginning right here, I've got myself an oval. If I wanna move this to the center of my layout, let's uh, move this, let's say put it up here close to the top, you can see that that fits on a four by eight sheet, no problem. Now let's create an inner loop. So let's do a new starting position right here. 
Let's do some 282 curves, space bar to add uh, the rest of them. Now I can take advantage of track I've already created. I could copy this, paste it, move it, do the same thing I did with the highlighting all of the track that I've made on the inside. I double click it, copy it, paste it, and then I'm going to move this end down here to the beginning and I've got myself a second oval. Now it's not exactly in the center. I could hold down on control and I can slide this around so it's kind of in the middle. So you can see I have a lot of space down here at the bottom. Also I haven't used very much track so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to highlight the bottom half, hold down on control, and move this down to here. Uh, also, I'm going to give myself uh, a double crossover. I got two tracks. It'd be nice if I could switch between them. I have a WX310. Notice I can connect it either here or here. So I want to look at where my red arrow is and I want to connect this one. Now if you get it reversed, if, if you connect it and it looks something like uh, this, all you have to do is grab it, hold down a control, and move it over. And then I'm going to have to add uh, some electricity. So here's a feeder track. Put that there. Now it turns out that the double crossover does not conduct electricity. So let me put this down here and add another feeder track. So I've got feeder track, double crossover, feeder track. Now at the other end over here, I need to connect that. That's uh, basically a, a double 240 and a double 186. And I've got myself a complete loop. Now, at any time, you can go to Tools, Parts List, and it will tell you exactly how many parts, along with the part number, uh, whoever the manufacturer is, of what we have so far. So you can see we have 48 of those straightaways and two different sets of eight curves, and then a couple of miscellaneous parts. But 49 pieces, we're not even halfway to our limit of uh, 100 pieces. So I can add a lot to this. So let's add uh, a turnout. I'm gonna get rid of a couple of these little straightaways. I'm gonna put in a switch. So I need our right-handed switch to start with. Now switch has three connection points, so I'm gonna select this connection point. I'll go down to the other end, select that, and do a left-handed. Then I'm going to double click on this little straightaway and connect it, control, move it to connect it to one end. And my space that's left right here, I'll fill in in a second. Uh, I'm, at, I'm down here close to the curve, so let me just add this 718 curve. Do the same thing with the other side, except that's going to be a right-handed one. Now let's go up to the top. Since Cato has a lot of track, uh, over time you figure out when you can uh, add something and avoid having to scroll back and forth a lot. And then to fill this last little gap in, I'm going to put in a 124. And now I have a lane with the side out. Now, we're using technology. We might as well make it super easy. I'm going to highlight the site out I just made. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it. And then I'm going to, grabbing on the left end, I'm going to move it down here to the right end. Just like that, I've made a second identical site out for the inside track. Let's go back to our tools. Look at how many parts we have. 63 parts, so I can still add another 37 pieces to this layout, which is uh, quite a lot. This already is a nice, interesting track. I've got two lanes, each of them with a the side out. I've got the double crossover. Let's make a reverse loop. So to start with, I'm going to put in a 186 uh, switch, so that leaves me uh, a 62 to fill in that open space. Now let's go down to our switch. It's going to be a left-handed switch connected like that. 
right into a right-handed switch connected like that. Now let's uh, add that 718 curve and we're going to take this over and around and back. So let's start on the long stretch. Let's go up to our straightaways. Let's add a bunch of these until we get uh, oh, to right there. And I'm going to I figured out that uh, one of the smallest uh, reverse loops you can do, I just call it a 282 because it's mostly made of 282 uh, curves. I'm going to put in two of those. And then I'm going to put in a 62 millimeter straight piece. I'm going to go back down to my curves. And I'm going to put in a 249. And then another 282. And then another 249. And then the rest of them are 282s. So if I do a 282, then go back to the right. And one last one. Now I gotta do is fill this in. It does take one little piece, a 33 millimeter, and then the rest of these are 248s. So now I have a double loop with the double crossover, two side outs, a reverse loop, this is a nice, this would be a fun uh, little track to, to play with. And I still have 17 pieces left. So let's use them up. I'm going to add uh, another switch right here. And this is going to be a right-handed switch. Followed by one of the 718 curves. Probably about a at least one of these. I could probably squeeze out another little one. And now let's uh, take, let's curve this back with the uh, 249s. I'm going to hit the space bar so I get a few of those. Now I go back up here to my straight pieces. Instead of going back down to the curves, I'm just going to copy this, paste this, move this, Connect it right there. And then right here, I'm going to add. And I, okay, that's about size wise, it's about all that's going to fit. Let's uh, cap that off with a, a bumper at the end. So now I've got a really nice layout. I've got this storage area, a reverse loop, a couple side outs, all on a double lane track. And uh, let's see where I am with my parts. I got two parts to spare. My point is this. Just with the free version, you can get a really good idea of what a fairly complex layout is going to look like and make sure it fits the area you have and the track that you have. Uh, again, I'll point back to the list. It tells me the part number and the manufacturer for every one of the pieces. So you could take the, that information, go out to your favorite train website, go to your local hobby shop, and you could uh, get the exact pieces you need to make a particular layout. Uh, I've used SCARM for going on two years now, and uh, I have a couple licenses because I use it on a desktop and a laptop. I really like it a lot. It's simple to do, and I haven't even touched on the 3D things or the track elevation components that are included. But uh, as you can see, it's, it's a very simple program to use to do a nice, precise layout of your choice.